we're just gonna animate without a picker. We're just gonna probably just block in the body. I don't use a picker for the body. Yeah, me too. But you do usually it used to work, so I don't know why suddenly it's not working. Doesn't matter. Let's set this up and let's set everything up how I like it. I will lock the camera. I will also select the camera and personally I like to change this so that the thing around it is black because I like it better that way and I can't remember where it is here gate mask color there we go that feels better for me I'm gonna show curves here and we're gonna get the reference so for anyone who's been to one of my streams before um, or seen our demo I this is how I basically put in my reference and how I analyze it. So we're going to basically do everything from scratch here because I'm I literally this is the first time that I open this gladly Madison shot beautiful reference and I didn't have to do it myself. So this is going to be way better than anything I've ever done just because I have great, great, great reference. So. We're gonna create a free image plane. We're gonna try and find it here. I do need my outliner actually. And I like to have it on this side. Eh, there we go. This is usually my setup, my real setup. I usually have my shot come far away in another screen that like it, uh, the whole screen is covering my, uh, with my shot because I like to say everything and I don't want to miss anything, but we are not going to have that here. I'm going to name this always name everything. And something that I like to do now a day, especially at work, because I feel like somebody's going to maybe put this accidentally in the movie. is just change the outline color to something very noticeable so that we know, oh, once everything is done, we will just delete this reference. That's just me prepping everything for what I need. And let's bring our reference in. And let's remember where the reference is. Images? Shot? Yes. Haha. <laughs> okay. Cool. We have our reference and use image sequence and this shoots to our date. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Now I'm going to have the camera uh, control the reference. And the reason for this is just so that if the camera moves, my reference is gonna be static. So I'm not gonna maintain offset. And then I'm going to just grab the reference and move it backwards in space. And now I can have my reference always there. And just to make sure we're, is the reference playing? No, of course it's not. Because nothing works the first time you do it. Okay, why is my reference not working? Let's just break, delete the expression and key this ourselves. I'm pretty sure it's not working because of the frame in and frame out. I don't know why they are not how they should be. And oh, I hate doing math on stream. So I'm just Okay, there we go. And here is going to be one. Oh, type? No. Oh, um, oh man, I know some Swedish. Ah, I forgot all my Swedish right now. Hey, <laughs> that's as far as I remember. Um, no, but the Im the image type uh, the type is isn't it? No, is it? But it should be an image because this is it's an image. That's very weird. Because if it's a movie, it, it, this is not a movie though. 
it's an image. It's okay, we're gonna figure it out as we go. But that's the thing. <laughs> I could put it here. Frame in. Uh, what's my frame in? Seven, eight, nine. And my frame out is nine fifty nine. Okay. It's okay. We're gonna figure it out. Somehow this is gonna work. See, this is welcome to me troubleshooting <laughs> something <laughs> so that everything works. <laughs> oh, and frame offset. Actually, I forgot to type this in because it doesn't start at zero. I fixed it. No, 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 it's good. It like I know that the the image plane works on everything. It was just I forgot that the I needed to add the frame offset. <laughs> I knew it. I knew I could do it. So now we have everything we need. Yay! Wait, is it working again? Is my Maya okay? Now we're gonna save because I don't want to have to do this ever again. And this is gonna take a while. There we go. I'm not going to have my image planes here or whatever this is. And so the first thing that I personally do when I'm shooting, when I'm shooting, when I'm blocking is I analyze my reference. So this gladly, like Madison already thought about the subtext. She already thought about everything, but now I have to actually animate. So I have to analyze how I'm going to do this. And I'm, I'm, I'm not a straight ahead person, so I'm not just going to animate. That's not how I work. I went even at work. I don't just animate so you're gonna have to watch me analyze this and how i would actually do this so i'm just gonna get this a little bit bigger because now all i need is to analyze my reference to think okay where do i need my keys and breakdowns to be what's the minimum thing that i need to block this shot out i love this also also i'm gonna play it so that everyone can watch it um because I I have seen it many, 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 many ages ago, but I don't think anyone has watched it. So let's play it so that we are aware of what we're gonna do. What what is our blocking going to be? What do we what do we have to expect from this shot? I always like to know what I'm doing before I start. And in the meantime, well that one is play blasting. I don't know if you guys can see, but there, let me see if I can just change this for a second. There, I have a new book that I bought. It's on um, basically what what was it the name of it? The Art of Blue Sky, and I got it for ten pounds, really cheap. So if anyone is in London and you want the Art of Blue Sky for ten pounds, go to Forbidden Planet. No, no, they are not sponsoring us. They could look. I'm selling their stuff. And I bought it today and now it's my display book because I'm very happy. Like I couldn't get into Blue Sky and I will never get into Blue Sky because it doesn't exist. So all I have is that, uh, the art of Blue Sky. I guess it's as good as that, right? Yay. Okay, so let's play this. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> nice. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> I don't know if maybe I should shift the oh, reference a little I'm bit not because it's not hitting where I need it to hit. Oh, I'm not acting. Eh, maybe it is, but I feel oh, like I could. I'm not acting. I think I can oh, change this. I'm not acting. To sh like shift the uh, basically all of the reference a little bit sooner, just so that it hits a little bit. Sorry, Maddie and Dan. I'm changing this oh, I'm not acting just a little bit oh, I'm not acting oh, I'm not acting yeah especially I think maybe it is like this because it feels um let me just double check basically when where the and I didn't shoot this I didn't do this so I'm not as familiar with this project as um, Daniel and Madison are, I'm just getting into it. So I need to make sure that everything is 
how it should be before I get started, just for obvious reasons. So this has 225 frames has the reference, and this is um, 7, 8, 9, minus... Oh yeah, I can definitely shift the, the references longer than the shot, so clearly I can shift this. And just so that I have more room to play, I will change my frame out. And now I basically need to match what the audio is doing to the reference. This, this shot is going to take ver several streams for me to block it out, by the way. Huh, the ha huh is the, but actually it feels like the reference should start. Daniel and Madison, if you're here, can you just let me know? Uh, because she's so good at acting that you thought it was the, the someone else. Yes, I know. So let me just, I'm going to message them just to confirm, um, just to make sure that we're doing things. Because I'm not sure. If not, we can just start blocking kind of what we see. Like, we can start analyzing the reference, and that's it. But yeah, we're going to start analyzing the reference and hope that this is going to be what we need. So, what would I do when I'm going to analyze my reference? What am I looking for? So, I. I'm going to turn this sound off. When I'm analyzing reference, I don't really need sound. And I'm going to look at what the body is doing. Basically, I'm going to scrub through and see, feel, OK, where are my extremes? Where are my, I don't know, apexes of curves? Uh, do I need any breakdowns, like an ease in, ease out, something like that, so that the motion reads? Basically, it's what do I need to animate? So for example, here, like first I'm gonna kind of look at the hips and I feel like, and this doesn't have to be perfect again, because reference is just reference, but around here is kind of the apex of the, of the hips. And I'm gonna add this in, there we go. I'm gonna remove that. And, this is the apex of the hips, and I'm just going to follow the hips first, and then I'm going to add breakdowns somewhere else when I need them. I'm here, like the hips are rotating sideways, but here it's kind of like they are hitting a translation up as far as they go, and then they rotate a lot more. But even up to here, they, are, they don't have much rotation in Y. So I'm just going to set a key here. And this is all part of my blocking. Like already this for me is starting to block things out. So sorry if it feels boring for everyone, but I'm going to go through my thought process as to how I actually block a shot. So this would be me at work doing this, but more rushed because I don't have time to actually do this. And then the hips kind of go up. And they kind of stay up. There, There is a slight change, like aside from them rotating, but there's like a lot of bounce that I can feel, particularly if I look at the lines in the on the pants, the trousers, however you want to call them. There's like an up here, and then they kind of go down here, and then they come up and rotate. And then I'm also looking kind of at the rest of the body just to see that everything is doing. I'm not, I'm not missing something very important, but I'm going to look at that later. 
here, see, for example, here, I know that the hips stop around here. So I'm, I am going to set a key there, but I'm going to go back after to see what else I need from the rest of the body and the hands and everything. And then here, the hips move sideways. And I'm focusing on the hips because they are driving the motion a lot. They, here they come up. I could actually put this in the next frame. Now, here they come down and they kind of settle there. And my Maya is crashing? No, okay. Here they move a little bit sideways. Here there's a lot of information that I don't necessarily need right now. I'm gonna add it later. It's kind of like the hips are not really moving up until here. So I'm going to add this key in just so that I have the information that I need. And again, I don't know if this is how people block things out. I personally feel very comfortable using this method. I've been through pretty much all the, I've, I've gone through all the other blocking methods that there are in terms of blocking. But for me, analyzing the reference like this is what gives me the best results because I'm actually thinking about every single thing that the body is doing. So here I'm just looking, okay, the hips are, and I scrub through and I just look at where the hips stop moving. Here it kind of feels like the hips don't move as much and then they move. Oh my God, my Maya is really laggy today. Here I'm probably just gonna add more information in terms of the hands. I'm not going to focus on the hips that much more. Like all of this, it feels like up to here, maybe. And then here the hips are coming down. And then they move to the side. So that's perfect. Um, Hang on. Um, oh, the sound, I need to offset. Okay, I need to actually offset the sound. So maybe that's why it was feeling a little bit off. Let me just double check. Nope, I have it offset. Um, messaging with Madison. Okay, so let's get back, get back to this. So if every, like the way that I decide my extremes is I first try to focus on the bigger thing. So in this case, I try to focus first on the hips and then I'm gonna, like I did, when I was doing these keys, I wasn't really looking at the whole body. I was only looking at the hips. Just because I feel like the hips are going to make, like if the hips are coming up, the whole body is going to move up. So that apex is going to be there. And then now I'm going to do a pass where I basically look at the upper body. And then I look, uh, Ellie, hey, what are you doing? You should be enjoying your holidays. But hey. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to look at the upper body and the hands and maybe not the head rotation yet. I'm going to see. Um, and I'm going to see, okay, what do I actually need in between this? And doesn't this doesn't mean that these are all the keys that I'm going to have in my blocking. Actually, in my blocking, I'm going to have way less keys than what I have right now. But I like to analyze everything from the start so that when I get to animating, I only animate. I'm not thinking about, ooh, what's the body gonna do here? I, I like to analyze. Basically, some people like to plan this ahead with like drawings and thinking about it and actually do a planning outside of Maya. I like to do it in Maya because I can't draw to save my life. So I have to do it with reference. When I do cartoony, I do drawings, but they're the worst thing ever. <laughs> so. I, I'm not gonna do a cartoony shot clearly here. So here it feels like the chest 
even the hips actually, I missed kind of the hips coming up. So here I'm gonna have this and then do I need a break down here? It doesn't feel like I need one. It does feel like the head keeps rotating back and there's a big spacing here. So I'm probably just going to have, cause here it feels like it speeds up and it could be like just a, an encoding issue or whatever, but I do like that the rotation kind of hits an apex here. But since I'm going to be very lazy, probably I'm just gonna have this here because the rotation is the same. Oh yeah, Madison. Oh, I was so happy when they were like, ooh, do you want to do this? Madison already shot the reference. I was like, ah, yes. Oh yes, I do want to do this. Oh my God, where did you go today? You didn't reply. I messaged with Ellie. Ellie is a friend of mine. And I was like, Ellie, where are you going today? Because he's in, in England. And he said, I booked so many tours. I'm like, yeah, where are you going? And he said, I have tomorrow off. Yes, but where are you going? <laughs> where, are, where did you go? I want to know if you want to just message me on WhatsApp. I want to know where he went. <laughs> yes. <I know. laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm a bit worried at you that he doesn't know. Um, yeah, stop. Tell me where he went. Uh, so, okay. So here, now I'm looking at the upper body and I'm looking at everything here. I'm even looking at the head just because if the upper body isn't doing that much, then I'm going to look at the head. So here, the head, the, you have me, like, keep me as a friend. Tell me where you went. This is how friendships work. Tell me where you went on your freaking holidays. Um, if anyone is on TikTok, it like, I, I'm, I'm feeling the vibe of this girl that is like, read the prompt when she goes like through Tinder profiles and it's like, maybe just a different prompt. So I feel like the same, like, tell me where you went. So here I'm going to, I'm looking at the head and it feels like here the head stops rotating down. So I'm gonna have a key there because I need that information. Whether I block it in at the beginning or not, that is irrelevant. And here I kind of have what I need. This is being very peaky now, but if I look at the screen right arm, it's coming out and I kind of like that. So I'm going to set a key when it stops coming out, like the extreme of that. And this is you we were asking, how do I choose? This is kind of how I choose. I just scrub through and I start looking at when do things change direction and when do they stop changing direction just because that means i can have a pose there or a breakdown there and i'm gonna get the good a good result so basically what i'm aiming for with this is once i finish analyzing all of my reference i turn this into stepped and i scrub through all of my keys and i'm like does this read do i have all the information that i need am i missing anything and then i'm gonna start blocking so probably like the most we're gonna do today is analyze the reference because it does feel like I'm taking forever to do this. So here, for example, we're having a lot of information from the, like if I were to animate this and I've lost my keys, hang on. Oh, it's because I have the frame selected. If I were to animate this from here to here, it will all smoothly move at the same time. From here to here, everything will move exactly at the same rate at the same time. But if we look at the nuance of the movement, first the shoulders come up. So I'm gonna have that key because then the body starts moving sideways. Oh, I did that tour. Oh, I love that tour. It's amazing. Really nice one. Um, Windsor Castle, Stonehenge and Bath are, I love that tour. I did it a few years ago and it's so, so nice. So here, first the shoulders come up and then she moves sideways. I need that information because if I just block here to here, 
what's going to happen in my animation is going to happen this. This is how it's going to animate when I hit spline. But if I look at this, when I hit spline and I have that information in, it's going to do this where the shoulders are going to come up and then the body is going to move. So I personally like to look at this at the beginning so that I know the information that I need. So from here to here, do I need any more information from this to this? I'm going to look at this. Uh, not really. I mean, actually, this should be my key, not this one. And how did I choose that? Um, basically, because, yes, maybe the hips, the apex gets it's here. But the apex of the head is here. It's more important and more visually it's more it, it's it's basically more it's getting my attention more than what the hips are doing. So I'm going to just delete what it would have been my key here and just put it here so that it's there. And yes, reference is just reference. And now we're gonna basically kind of copy one to one when I block out but I don't copy all of the poses. Basically what I do when I do my blocking pass is I choose my main key poses and then I do a play blast and I feel the timing and I feel, okay, do I actually need this? Because we never want to copy reference one-to-one -one exactly because reference translated to animation never works well. You need to push things. You need to push the line of action. You need to push the timing. You need to push everything. So. Yes, right now I'm analyzing the movements so that I can get the new ones in. But then when I block things out, maybe all of this, I'm going to crunch up the time so that the flow feels better. We don't know. We're going to find it out. Okay, so here, it might be nice to have kind of a breakdown here because she hasn't really turned the head that far down, but far here so i'm just gonna have this as a breakdown and then from here to here do i need another breakdown not really honestly i could if i wanted but i don't need a breakdown here so it's not that i'm adding breakdowns everywhere all the time it's just where i need it so for example from here to here there's a lot happening if i block this out I'm going to miss out a lot of information. For example, the best information that I can add is the kind of the extreme of that hand. And I can have it again. It doesn't have to be super precise, but around here is kind of she's still moving sideways and then down. Um, oh, that's oh, I don't remember who was my guide. It was literally to the date two years because <laughs> it was I, I, it was a more than two years ago but that's so cool that i i love tour guides because they they add a lot to your experience and if you get a good one like you had where they are very funny it just makes the whole experience much better and you remember it way more fondly so oh uh, that's so good to hear that it, he was so funny you should tell him like hey you should be a stand-up comedian <laughs> And actually here, should I actually move? Nah, I was just thinking, should I? Nah, should I move that key? I'm also looking at the mouth, like is it doing, but I think that the lip sync is not necessarily the same because we were not sure before. So, okay, from here to here, how, where do I need? So here the hips are actually, I don't know why I missed this. The hips are rotating and doing a lot of movement here. So I'm actually going to block this because there's a big change. And then the hand comes down and everything comes down. But there is a little bit of an arc, like her head suddenly rotates down here. So I'm just going to key around here so that I have that information. Do I need something here? Nah. And if we analyze this, her head starts coming down and then it rotates. So I'm just going to have that. 
and and actually the head kind of comes down here and then it moves sideways so I'm gonna put a key here and I'm gonna delete this one I'm trying to find what is what is it that I need for everything to read and now when I look at the upper body maybe what I did for the hips is not as important so I can just shift it around if I like for example here I like that this screen right shoulder is coming up first like a lot more that's a nice breakdown to have because it's going to inform how the shoulder gets there so I'm gonna get that we kind of now have an apex uh, apex an extreme with a nose rotating down and again this is taking forever because I'm talking about it in reality I go through this incredibly fast um, if I don't have to explain everything that I do so I know that this feels like it's taking forever but it's not it's just so here if we look at the head there's like a slight head shake again I might not add this in the animation it might end up looking very uh, I don't know messy at some point but she is kind of having like a laugh and a head shake so I want that in I want that information and for all of this from here to here I just need to know when she starts rotating the head there's not that much with the body movement there is some breath going on and some rotation x with the chest that you can see here that the chest is kind of rotating and like her shoulders are coming back um and so i'm going to also the head is coming down so uh do you believe in stepped for detailing more than layered for the head shakes and stuff um depends so i personally don't animate in layered anime in layer in a layered fashion i my brain doesn't like it i've tried it and it doesn't go with my workflow because it feels like my brain is trying to get ahead too far to what it needs i like to block it in but i block it in roughly and then when i move into spline i make sure that it works uh so i know that for some people stuff like this works very very well in layered because basically what they can do is if you work in layer you would just pose i don't know maybe your body here like your shoulders here and your shoulders there and all you have to do then is just grab one shoulder and offset it in when you would like you would do this all in spline you would not do it in step you would do it in spline and you would just offset the shoulder and then one would come after the other i personally again this is i'm not saying that's wrong i'm just saying for my brain that is that feels very messy because when i look at my timeline let's say i select all my character and i look at my timeline i might end up having a key every single frame and from experience i know that i will get very overwhelmed if i see that so what i try to do is find ways to not get overwhelmed when i look at my timeline um oh a hundred percent i mean i don't when i go from step to spline it's not that i remove and redo a lot it's more that i'm cleaning up and i realize oh if i delete all of this and i just shape my curve a little bit it works nice more nicely does that mean that i'm redoing everything in spline no i'm not redoing it when i when i finish my blocking it's pretty much 90 percent of the way there from what i need i'm not redoing stuff i'm only redoing stuff if i um if i block things very very wrongly like if i maybe my c curve is coming back and forth because i wasn't paying attention and when i spline suddenly my character is doing this when like that's when yes i would redo things i've come to a point when i if i block something out it's pretty much all the way there and when i hit spline all i have to do is slightly tweak my curves 
so that they are adjusting to what I need. I'm not redoing things. Again, this is my method. I'm not sure. I know that, yes, for sure, I delete a lot of keys. If like right now, basically, Ellie and you uh, and I work at the same place in the same project and our quota is relatively high for the quality that they want. And so right now I'm not blocking very detailed. My blockings are on fours, maybe threes, uh, possibly sixes. So a lot is kind of figuring it out in spline, which I'm not a big fan of. And so I'm not deleting a lot of keys. But if I'm blocking for myself, I like to block it maybe to a point in two sometimes. And if I block in twos, because I'm trying to get more nuance to the movement, sometimes I will delete keys, but it's more so that I have a clean curve rather than because I'm redoing a lot of stuff. I mean, when I'm splining, I definitely also push things a lot more. And the reason for this is because when we do something in blocking, it might feel nice, but then when we hit spline, there's a lot more information coming through and maybe you need to push, a, maybe the TY needs to go higher or a gesture needs to be broader because it's not the same feeling that you're getting when you're splining than when you're blocking. Um, yes, when I block, I do use the graph editor, but I'm not using it at all. Like I, use, I should use it more if I'm being honest. Sometimes I don't look at it for a bit too long and suddenly I look at my graph and I'm like, oh, that looks very bad. So I try to, hit, like, I always have it open. Basically, when I'm animating, my screen looks like this on my right monitor. This is my screen. I have my perspective view, my graph editor, my everything. I would have my picker here. Like, all the tools that I need are on one side. And my shot cam is on my other screen, fully covering my screen. And I always keep the graph open. Do I look at it all the time? No, because sometimes I'm so, I'm so into the process that I don't look at it. But the reason why I'm, I feel slightly confident of doing that is because I use the tween machine a lot when I block. So if I'm gonna, I'm basically what I do is when I block things out, I block out my main key poses first. And again, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have time to actually get into blocking today. We're just going to, like, if anyone wants to leave, oh, no, bye. But um, I'm going to analyze the reference first. I'm going to actually do this like I actually do this. And I'm going to analyze my reference. And then I basically, what my method of blocking is, I block out my key storytelling poses, which should be eight to 12 poses. Um, the reason for this is partially because of how I was taught. I was taught that you should be able to tell a story with eight to 12, to 12 poses. If you can't, you have too much. You have too many things going on. And so I do that also because I don't think of my blocking as key poses and breakdowns. I think of it as checkpoints, which, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. But the reason why I think of it as checkpoints is because maybe I'm not thinking about key pose. No, it's not including breakdowns. Eight to 12 poses are your storytelling poses, the poses that you need to tell a story. So let's say, I don't know, here, for example, what do I need to tell the story? I need the first pose. I need maybe here, which is kind of, I don't know, the like that moment where she lets go. And then the turn would be at one pose. Maybe this laugh would be another. Maybe this one would be another. And this look would be another. And this one. So, and maybe this one at the end. But basically, yeah, it is key poses, but it's storytelling poses. It's not the same as key poses. I mean, basically like this. Storytelling poses are key poses, but key poses are not storytelling. Not, not every key pose is going to be a storytelling pose because I can have, I don't know, 100 key poses in my shot, but only 8 to 12 are going to tell the story, are the ones that are going to say, like actually say what they have to and let me see actually yeah golden poses exactly also that like but gold like let me see if i have uh, 
I don't know if I have all my process from Animation Mentor. I think I, maybe I can download it and show it to you guys. Because when I was in class four, uh, basically my mentor, Ray Ross, the one and only, the fantastic Ray Ross, he said, for the first blocking, only have storytelling poses. And I think I went a little bit overboard with it and I did a little bit more than my storytelling poses just because I, I got excited <laughs> and I thought I needed more. But let me just double check and I can show you guys. But I need to download the file because I'm pretty sure I don't have it anymore in my computer because a while back I thought, I don't need this anymore. I don't need my AM stuff. Why? I don't know why I said that to myself. But yeah, I found the file so I can download it. And if I can find out where to download it. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, there's so many names for this, but my way of, process, of processing my blocking is basically the reason why I go into uh, story poses is because I think of my blocking as checkpoints. And the reason why I think of it as checkpoints is because how can I think of my blocking so that I know where I'm going and I know where I'm going to be? I don't like straight ahead. And again, there's nothing wrong with straight ahead. I do a mix of post to post and straight ahead. But to do my straight ahead, I need to know where I'm going. I need to know where the character is going to be in space. I need to understand, like, is the character going to end up really far forward? Because let's say the, the character is here and they end up here. If I do it straight ahead, maybe I'm not getting them further enough. And then I need to tweak all my poses backwards. So I like to do checkpoints. And by checkpoints, I'm like, okay, what are the things that I need minimum for my animation to understand? Yes, storytelling poses. But for me, I kind of see them as checkpoint because maybe sometimes they're not necessarily storytelling poses. So for me, a checkpoint would be this pose, this pose for sure. This pose would be another because I like how it's turning. And then this one would be a checkpoint because it's like, I where do I need to be? This would be a checkpoint for sure. Maybe this would be a checkpoint as well because I know I need to get there. Checkpoint would be around here. Maybe this would be a checkpoint because of what the hands are doing. They are gesturing. And then here. Yeah, I personally feel like I have a more artistic control, but also because I've been through this shot where if I hadn't done, I've been through, no, I've been through my fair share of shots at M Spirit where I didn't do this method. And then I had to, basically the character wasn't moving far enough. And then I had to go back and reanimate all the things that I had done. And that took so long. And I don't know why I didn't do the method that I was comfortable with. At the beginning, I think I was a little bit like, Ugh. yeah, in subtle shots, like personally, when I do a subtle shot, my blocking is very, very minimal. My blocking is um, basically on six, on sixes and or eights. So my blocking is super, super minimal when I'm doing a subtle shot. I don't have that much that many keys i don't have that much movement i kind of quote unquote figure it out in spline but because usually in subtle shots the body isn't moving that much so i don't need that much information maybe i do my first blocking pass in sixes and eights and then where i need i will put maybe when it's in eights maybe i will put a, a key on the on a four just because it will give me a little bit more control, but on subtle, I th this it's like a very tame version of what I'm doing. But I still go through my reference. Like I go through my reference no matter what, except for cartoony and creatures. But that's, that's, that's we're not doing that. So this is how when I was doing my um, my shot, this was my first blocking pass. Okay. Well name is flying me to a place I can't tell you about. It's Paris. Wow, I gave that up easy. So this was my first blocking pass and this isn't uh, 
this isn't really storytelling poses. My storytelling poses would have been this for sure. Let me do annotation tools. This would have been a storytelling pose. This probably would have been a storytelling pose. This for sure. This one. None of this ones. And this one. And this one. How many do I have? I have. Can I go through my poses? Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I could add more if I wanted because eight to 12 is like a nice number. So, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I'm, I still love this shot. I don't hate it. So I really like it too. I'm very, pr I'm very proud also because of the struggle that it was. Like one day, if you guys want, I can download all the versions that I did. And I like when people say, oh my God, you're so talented. I'm not talented. <laughs> if you see my, my process during AM, it was a lot of failure and a lot of redoing. My first lip sync pass, it was so horrible, it did not read. And I had to basically, in one week, I deleted my whole blocking and I re-blocked re it for the lip sync four times. Four times, I literally deleted the whole blocking and started it again. And after that fourth time, that's when it looked good. So I'm not talented. I just work hard. Um, no, but Ellie, like you say, oh, you can break down subtle shots in steps. It, it's honestly, it, it's not a, like you have also a, your method that works really well for you. It's like everyone has their own methods and it doesn't mean that one method is better than the other. It just means that it's different. And whatever works for you, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't and you're feeling like you're struggling, that's when you start, you need to start looking for another method. Like for example, I know I don't know how to animate creatures. I just don't. I struggle and I struggle because they are in spline usually. You need to animate them in spline. So how do I tackle that? Until I have actual time to sit down and learn how to do it, which I desperately need to do, what I do is I block it out in st half stepped, half spline until I figure it out. But I know that I need to get better at it. But like, for example, if you um, can do subtle already in spline and it works for you, who cares? Like, the, doesn't matter how you get there. It only, the only thing that matters is getting there, the end result. How long did it take me for this shot? So basically, um, at, I, at AM, it you are given six weeks to shoot reference and finish the shot. I had like a like a polished path, which was a lie. I was not polished um, after the sixth week. And then I kept on polishing this shot for at least, I would say, a month. So basically, it would have taken me... I think it this shot overall took me maybe three months to do. <laughs> oh, I you. <am. laughs> so so <laughs> this shot took me like this shot. How many frames? Two hundred and forty frames with one character took me like three months. Again, I was learning also. Like in spirit, we didn't have three months for a two hundred. Like my two hundred and fifty-four frames in uh, shot in spirit took me maybe like three weeks with other shots in the middle. And I was like, oh, that's more than the project that we're working on now. In the project that we're working on now, I have one week to do a 300 frame shot with four characters. Then it's like, what? And that includes reference. <laughs> and our, our work days are seven hours. So not even eight hours work. So you, yeah, you can you can imagine, like also when you're learning, it takes longer. Again, I had to re-block my lip sync four times. I don't do that at work anymore. I don't re-block my lip sync because I know how to do it now. I also really love lip sync now. It, it's like, I think it was like a Stockholm syndrome where you are trapped with your captor so long that then you love the captor. <laughs> So my captor was 
lip sync and now I love it. Like I really love lip sync. It's like facial animation is my favorite part. Um, how much would it take me to redo all of this right now? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> Three days would be, I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I mean, it's 200. Let's, let's put it in this. If I were doing this in an actual movie with really nice quality, nice quality, but not the highest quality, like nice quality. Nice quality is three to four seconds a week. And this is 240, which is, um, like, why am I, it's obviously 10 seconds. Oh my God. But let's just do it so that it's visually there. Let's say three. It would take me three weeks to do this. Or like, yeah, a little bit less than three weeks. Oh, I you. I, I will be the master of animating watches. Um, and as long as nobody changes anything on the set, uh, life would be always beautiful. Uh, so I think this would take me maybe three weeks instead of three months. <laughs> like, if I wanted to be very, very detailed, maybe this shot would take me like a month to animate. Do I want to redo this ever? No. Once was enough. <laughs> One time animating this whole shot was more than enough. I don't need to. No thanks. <laughs> like let's leave the past in the past or also if anyone has seen there's a very funny tiktok i'm gonna find it for you guys just because it's super funny um where you know uh frozen where she says the past is in the past there's this funny tiktok where they put like the misheard lyrics and it's the pasta is in the pan and now i can't unhear it so every time that I think about the passes in the past. This is the passes in the pan. So let me see if I can find it for you guys because it's so, so funny. And yes, <laughs> I found it. So yeah, if anyone wants to laugh a little bit and get into my joke, uh, the past is in the pan. That's what I will say from now on. So let's get back to this. I definitely won't have time to start blocking, but this is part of my blocking. Then if you guys have any questions about this, uh, feel free to join in and ask questions. So here, um, I know it's so funny. Yeah, I put this, this is enough. And then from here to here, I kind of like that she her nose is coming down and then it's rotating. So I'm actually going to put a key here and I might move this key maybe around here because i also when i block things out i also tend to look at where the blinks are like there's a, like a lot that's happening in my head when i'm analyzing my reference like putting it into words sorry it's really hard because it's a lot is happening in my head <laughs> when i'm analyzing and putting it into words is really hard but i look at the blinks as well um so for example here it matches kind of where the blink is, but maybe it doesn't so much. So maybe this is where the blink actually is. So I'm going to delete this just because this is something that I also see students miss a lot. They block out a whole shot and there's not one blink. And maybe you can have that be intentional, but blinks are very important because blinks tell a story. Blinks are there to help you either, um, show the show the yeah <laughs> don't blink show the emotion of the character maybe they help you edit because maybe the character is thinking about something very intently and then they get out of it and they blink to kind of it's like eh, blinking is editing is internal editing and so you blink and then you move that to another thing or maybe the blink again if you're Wrote, like rotating your head really fast you blink so that like i was saying before you don't look at all of that blurriness happening in front of you and your brain doesn't get confused or or the character just blinks because maybe they are scared and they have a lot of blinks or maybe they are flirty and they are like doing a flutter so i also look at my blinks and where they are 
And I try to not forget about that just so that I know where they are. Like here, there are some blinks and here she opens her eyes. So that's going to be important for me where her eyes open. And again, maybe in terms of the body, that's not necessarily a breakdown that I would have, but it is for me because of my blink. I need to have when the eyes are fully open so that I understand what I need. Again, this is just me analyzing how I do it. It doesn't mean it's the way to do it. It's just how I've, over the years, I've managed to get this so that I cry less. Everything that I do in animation is so that I cry less because every time I hit spline, a little part of me dies and I cry internally and a few times externally as well. So this is also that I cry very, very little. Here, I'm probably not gonna have that many keys because uh, there's not that much going on. Like there is some things with the hands that could be nice. So I'm gonna see if I do them, but first I'm gonna see, okay, what's the head doing? Like here, it feels like the upper body is coming up and then it stays there. So if the upper body, like around here, the head is rotating and then it's like it's stopping. This part is complex. So I'm gonna look at it a bit more and feel, okay, where do I need it? Also the expression changed. Like, where do I need it? But I think I'm gonna just have a key in the middle. I don't think I need that much information there yet. And here, basically I will put a key here as kind of, some people like to call it moving holds. Moving holes is basically where the body is just in one pose and it's just staying there. And that's why they are called moving holes because it's holding a pose but living in it. And I want to know where my moving hold ends. Also, I haven't said moving holes in like a million years. I'm going to save. Uh, I feel like that's a term that is very, it's used a lot when you're studying and then no one talks about it after. <laughs> They're like, moving holes, yes, just put a moving hole, and then nobody talks about it. Or at least the people that I know. And actually, this is kind of where the nose has an apex down, so I'm just going to put this here. And I'm going to delete that one. And this is really nice. There's a lot of subtleties here. So if I'm looking at the hands, they kind of start rotating here quite a bit and then they open. So I'm going to put a key here before they do anything. And then I'm going to, I, now I'm looking at the hands because this was the, there's more motion in the body in the hands and in the body. So I'm just gonna key all of this so that I get all of those nuances to this. So maybe here I will put a key. Actually, it feels kind of like, because of probably the encoding, there's a few frames here and there that are missing. So. I'm just trying to figure out what I need. And probably in this area, I'm going to have a lot of more keys to detail this motion. But for now, I'm not going to have them so much. I hear the hands start rotating, but they don't come in so much. So I'm going to have a key here. And I should, I think I have a shortcut for insert key, but I also think it didn't work so well when I used it. So I'm not going to use it. And then from here to here, there's not that much except the hands are coming in. Maybe I would put a breakdown here just to understand the spacing, but that's it. And then the elbows come out. And then the hands rotate and come down here. And then we already mark this. And then the hand opens here. 
So see here, I don't have that much information that I need. Maybe I would key here because it's before the hand starts opening. So it's like, I need that information. And then over here, do I need anything? Not really. All of this from here to here, I don't need that much information. And from here to here, I'm actually missing a lot of things. I'm missing out this look sideways. So I need this key because she's looking to the side. So that's important. And then her head keeps moving, keeps rotating to the side up to here. And then we have this, but I, I can just put that at the very end. So oof, yes, we made it. We did our analyzing of the reference. Yay. So then I'm going to save so that I don't lose anything. And I'm going to turn this into stepped. And now I'm just going to scrub through and make sure that it reads that maybe I'm not having too many keys or too few. So it's like, is this reading? If I animate this, will it read? Yeah, it has pretty much everything that I need. Is the timing good? Let's see it in step. It's going to feel good because it's a, a reference like from someone who can act actually well. But it's good to just double check. Like, do I need to retime something so that it's faster? Would it feel better if I retime it? Would it, is the timing working? I like to just double check because then I move into my actual blocking. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> oh, I'm not acting. I feel like hey, there's something about the timing of this that for me, I don't know if it's the fact that the it feels like the it, it's not that every sound has to hit on the like every gesture has to hit on the sound but it feels like we're not hitting anything for me and i feel like we could huh. like especially the huh. so again i don't know this so i don't know how it was maybe i should I, I, there's something that i need to adjust or oh, I'm, but like oh, i'm not acting i feel like we can adjust this like this movement here, I feel like it should be on the ha, huh, because here she's saying ha, huh, but her body language is going down. So it feels a little bit off this ha. Huh. Like there, usually when we laugh or anything, we tend to go up. And every time that we uh, do a higher pitch in our voices, let's say you're asking a question and you say, I don't know, where is this in the e eh, where is that is going to be a higher pitch so our body and our everything what wants to go up it wants to help that pitch yeah exactly yeah i i do it too um that's why like again i, I i'm being cautious just because it's not my project but uh, I personally do that all the time too. I adjust things in my in Maya so that it fits. And so Dan, I'm going to adjust this however I want. So now I'm going to turn the sound on and I'm going to fix this in my liking before I move into blocking. Because if I start blocking now, it's going to feel off and then I'm going to have to do it anyway. So yeah. So let's feel it out. I know that basically the main part that I want to retime is this. I want this particular pose to hit here in the huh. I really like that huh. I feel like it could be really nice. But then we're going to have a lot of space where it doesn't feel like the character is doing much. So we need to figure out where can I hold the character for longer so that we hit that where I need it. And I know I want this, huh? So I'm going to grab basically, where is this? Basically, I, I, maybe I can grab it from here and move it to where I need it. 
and I moved it too far. <laughs> Okay, and then before I start doing anything, I want to figure out if I put this where I need it. And then I don't want to lose the sideways look at the end, so I'm just gonna need to figure it out. So I'm going to rename this stream to planning a shot for demo rather than uh, blocking. Although again, this is part of my blocking. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> I kind of like that actually. I'm not and I think that what I'm gonna do is um, delayed when she turns around, because I think that's going to look really nice um, if I delay it a little bit more. It's like she's she's thinking about something she's going to have that in her mind and also because if not what do we do here uh, maybe around here i can push this and i'm gonna figure it out as i go here because probably this might be too much oh, i'm not acting okay and in this moment i play blast a lot <laughs> yeah for this i don't really use it because i i kind of want to figure it out myself um but i do the unit uh, also we need to dan we need to talk about the read timing the snaps because I've been using this at work. Oh, I don't know. Don't show me. Yes, it's off. Whatever. I've been using what you showed, the smart snap keys. But usually for it to work, I need to set smart key first. And it sets a key on every frame. It doesn't matter if, that. let's say here, I have a key here, a key here, and then I want to... I don't know, there's a few here, but it will set a key on every single frame of the area that I select instead of doing like a smart bake. So I'm not sure if I'm using it wrong or if that's how it works, but it was a bit annoying because I just wanted it to do a, like a smart bake rather than putting a key everywhere. So I'm not sure if I'm using it right or maybe there's some setting that I'm missing. Yes, it's like basically, um, let's say I have, I can sh even show it here. I will just save this. But let's say I have a key here and I don't have keys here, right? And then, yeah, I don't know. But let's say this is what I have. So basically, Let's say this is um, point two, and then this is also point three, whatever. And this is okay. I need to move this first. I'm just doing this just to show Dan something so that he can help me <laughs> because I have him here right now. And this is point one right so i select this and i don't want keys here because i don't need them right but if i do just a smart snap keys for me it didn't work last time that i did it let me try it again oh and now it works okay i i don't know now it works so forget i said anything dan because clearly now it works also, oh no, um, where were my, there we go. I don't know. Last time I tried it at work, the smart keys didn't do anything. Like literally everything stayed where it was. And I had to go in and do a set smart key, which would set a key on every single frame. And then I could use smart snap keys. Yeah, it, it, dude, seriously, every time, it's like, you know when, um, I don't know, you you were like, oh, mom, see, this happens. Oh, yeah, IT. 
it's like the same with IT when you're like, I can't do this. And then IT comes and they do it. And you're like, it wasn't working. Like literally a minute ago, it wasn't working. It's the same. So, okay, it works now. <laughs> exactly. So where were we? Oh, we were retiming this. Um, let's see if this feels better. Oh, I'm not acting. I like this. Oh, I'm not acting. And even in this moment, I feel like there's a lot of. <laughs> so I'm gonna add that in when I block it out, but I'm not gonna. I don't have it in my reference, so who cares? It's, I'm gonna add it in anyway. Um, yeah, maybe our our work files are come from hell. They are all cursed. I'm not so. acting. <laughs> I'm really liking this. I love Madison's acting. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we need. This is then this is why yeah, Madison's reference is amazing. This is why I do this before I start blocking. Because see how much we already retimed and moved around and decided before I started blocking. And this is in stepped. So this is what my final blocking is going to look before like i know already what's it, what's going to happen before i started even here i think I, we can change the I'm ending <laughs> like oh, let me think i'm not acting <laughs> cuz i i kind of like the ending at the like before so i think that you can move fail to what i do block my face in the first pass i may not block out my whole lip sync but when i block basically the way that i block and this is gonna be maybe the next stream next thursday i'm gonna actually start blocking and um, that that's also gonna help me figure out a few things in terms of my setup um basically when i block out my shot or what i do is i block out the body and every time that there's a big face change I put it in. So basically, what which face poses I would block in, and then I do a, a lip sync pass on my blocking. But um, my first blocking pass, which won't be the one that I show to a director necessarily, it's just my first blocking pass for myself. Um, I would basically put this shot, this face. I would put it in. <laughs> do it. Do it. Maybe you can also block the shot that you have left, and then we can finish. You can we can actually finish your short. Um, I already know Dan that this is going to take me a million streams to finish because, as you can see, I'm kind of like Bo. I uh, derail the conversation. I go on a million tangents, and then I come back. And when I come back, we barely moved from the first step. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Now I understand Bo better. <laughs> so, I would, which face poses I would put in? I would put this one, this one, because it's like a, it's like the extremes again. I may not put in everything on my first blocking, just because I, my first blocking pass, I want to feel the body. And the reason why I'm not blocking out the full face, the full blocking, is because what if I change things? What if suddenly I want the head to turn faster? If I did my blocking, I block my lip sync uh, in a post-to-post -post fashion. I don't do layered like a lip sync. And my poses are a lot towards camera because I'm looking for a nice line of action. I'm looking for a nice negative space uh, with the mouth. Okay. So if I block too nicely the face and then I go into my, I do a play blast and I'm like, oh, the body sucks. I need to change things. I'm going to lose a lot of time. So this would be another pose. All of this would be the same pose. This would be another pose just because of the eyes. This maybe I would put in this face pose. I would definitely put in, which is a tweaking, tweaking the previous one. This I would put in, and the end pose I would also put in. But I wouldn't do the whole acting 
all of that I wouldn't like this one is not a very complex lip sync um animation there's not a lot of going on like, like when she's mostly when she's speaking she's not really towards camera and so we we don't have to do that much but I don't when I'm doing my first blocking pass I only uh block out main again storytelling poses basically on my mouth and then once I'm really happy with my blocking for the body then I move on to the face. I do have a few face poses, again, as checkpoints. But the reason for that is because if I leave the face in neutral, I personally, I feel that my blocking, I'm not pushing it enough. But that's a mental thing for myself. I put the face there so that I understand the intention and the emotion in that moment. If I don't put it, and this is from experience when I didn't put it, it like I don't know why not seeing the face how it was in the moment um, made me feel like I didn't need to do enough. But if I see a smile, now I understand, okay, where do I need to push this? Because I now I understand the actual emotion. Is it a mental thing? Of course, you can do whatever you want. If you want, you can have the eyes closed, no, no face. You can even block out, like put a... Uh, I don't know, a s sphere in front of the face so that you don't see it. Whatever works for you. For me, I like to have it there. It's all a men Basically, my whole way of animating is a mental exercise. Yeah, exactly what Ayub is saying. If, uh, you, if you don't have it there, you can lose connection with the audience because that's the first thing that they look at 100%. So what were we doing? All oh, right, we wanted to bring back the end because we lost these nice frames and I really like this. So let's look at this back again and just figure out where can we trim a little bit. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> I think we can trim maybe a bit of this part. And then at the end, maybe a little bit. Oh, yeah, I think you sent me a message on Instagram. I'm so sorry. Could you could you put the link here again? I, I've been having a bit of intense weeks lately and I kind of forgot to see your message. I saw like the preview and I was like, oh, I need to reply to this. And then I forgot. Can you put the link, please, over here? And then I can look at it. Um, now <laughs> sorry i forgot honestly my week has been crazy so we said that we can retime here and here is when yeah we can use the tool that dan was mentioning because it will take a lot of time to actually do this mm, put it here yeah yeah that's okay but can you send me the link because I, I don't have it I, I close every link that I open during the stream, right during the stream. Thank you. So let me just retime this very quickly and then we can do that. Maybe up to here. So this whole part, actually, I don't want it here. I want it here. We can retime this a little bit. Maybe even this could be slightly faster, but definitely. <sighs> Actually, hang on, which one part did I say? This slightly faster. And then, oh, every time I need to select this. And maybe even that I can just see it myself. That I can just move this here. Um, okay, let me look at this and then I'm going to look again at that. So for the boards, oh, I remember this. Uh, let me just play them again, just so that also people can see if they haven't. He's an angel. He's just happy all the time. Morning, afternoon, middle of the night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., all the a.m.s. Okay, and then this one. 
I have been trying to put my grandma in a nursing home for years now, and she just won't go. So I started gaslighting her. I think both ideas could be really fun. Personally, I really like this one. I think uh, it has like it can have a really fun comedic timing. And it's not that I would never do this one. I would just do it after. I would focus on this one first. I think that um, it's going to like you. I feel like you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. It's going to be really fun. So, yeah, I would go with this one. So going back to this. <laughs> Actually, this could be slightly faster. I don't know what that means, Dan. Oh no, something happened. That's okay. And then I'm gonna want to bring back this. And I, I tried to never have the last frame on the last frame because then when you play Blast, you don't see it. And I'm gonna close this. Oh is where is that is that I'm gonna have to Google who is this outside of the stream so that just in case because I don't know what you guys are watching. Oh she seems very cute. She seems like a cute person. Why does it say what happened to her? Did she die? No, I don't know. I don't know her. Okay, so let's play this now. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> oh, this kind of works. I'm not acting. <laughs> oh. The only thing that I'm not really I'm not enjoying acting. is that if I were to block this out, What's going to happen is that uh, the beats are going to feel very even after this. <laughs> it kind of feels like everything happens. One, two, three, like everything with the same rhythm. So what I think is that I want to get into this sooner. And I'm guessing also that's what Madison actually did in the reference. But... Um, it like it gets sometimes lost in translation, but I'm actually I'm kind of scared of what's happened. This is see, I'm gonna go back to what I had just because uh, I'm scared that I'm gonna lose the keys that I so carefully put in because I there's a reason why I put a key here. There's a reason why, and if I I think I kind of lost something, so. I'm gonna go back and actually do this properly. So we know that up till here, we really like what we have. So I'm not gonna focus on this. And this is the only area that I actually need to work. I know that this needs to get there faster. So I'm gonna focus on this first. And here, there's like a lot of time that I can take out. Again, I personally like to do this manually. Sometimes I do use that tool, but I like to use that tool more in my animation and not in my reference, because if not, I am afraid of losing things. And I probably can remove a lot of keys from here and make this faster. There's a lot of information here that I might not need. And again, doing this before I start blocking, because I don't want to cry. And maybe even this one. I don't need it. And potentially this can get there faster. And maybe with this, we kind of already fixed the main problem that we had. Let's, let's see if this feels right. And again, I know that people may think, oh, this takes forever. In reality, if this is something that you shot the reference, that you started doing your, like you did the most of the work beforehand, this doesn't really take that long because you already know the beats and you already knew, you had in your head what you wanted to do. This is, this is a different case just because I'm just starting this from scratch in like a new project that I 
wasn't there. So I'm trying to figure it out as I go. In reality, if I'm shooting reference, I already know what I'm hitting. So I already know what I'm expecting from this reference. <laughs> I can still move it because I also could move the huh, could be there, which is probably what Madison went for. So I'm going to actually change this quite a bit. I'm probably going to just remove this frame and see if I can match this. Now I went too far. Slightly too far. This is where the huh is. No, I actually didn't go far enough. Then people think, see, she's not really that good. She takes forever to do this thing. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, and then it gives me actually a nice time for that look back to actually settle. Play blasting. Okay, I think that feels better. It's not perfect, but it's getting there. Let's just play let play play blessed this. I can't English anymore apparently. Let me just check that no one sent any sync sketch links on Discord, which sometimes happens. And then I see them too late. But no. Okay. And also if anyone wants me to review anything any feedback, just let me know. Um, I don't mind looking at feedback. I'm just doing this because uh, there weren't that many people that needed feedback, and I thought, eh, maybe this would be a nice oh, demo. I'm not acting. <laughs> oh, I'm not acting. kind of think we can get into that look slightly sooner. I know I keep tweaking this, but I want this to be perfect before I start. I don't want to change things when I'm blocking because then it feels like, why did I like this? That's not planning. Like when you plan a shot, you need to make sure that when you get into Maya and you start animating, you animate. You don't think about the next step. You just do it. And even this is not enough planning. Like a good, good, good planning would be figuring out, I don't know, if I could draw, I would draw out really nice face poses and have them already in a drawing so that I know what I need. Stuff like that, I can't draw. So I, part of my plan, my, part of my blocking, unfortunately, is figuring things out because I don't have that extra skill. But maybe one day I will actually do it and learn how to draw. So basically what I want is to get to this a little bit sooner, maybe. Maybe, you know what? I might just do it in my animation without doing it here. I feel like, let me just see. No, I think if I spline this, it's going to look very, very slow anyway. So also in terms of timing, I've had this question from someone very recently who asked me like, oh, can you do, oops, can you do a stream maybe on timing and feeling out the timing in stepped? And I thought, because they said, oh, I feel like when I'm blocking, I kind of just figure it out as I go and I, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm doing. And I think kind of my method is the same way, but I feel like the more I animate, the more I feel the timing in step and I understand what it's going to look like when I hit spline. So that's why I'm trying to time it now, just to figure out if this is going to be good. Because if not, there there's something that happens when you block out too much in too many frames where the character isn't moving too much and if it's not a solid shot 
it really feels slow and spliny, like the character has no life. So, yeah. And since this is a shot by uh, Dana, I can be like, hey, Dan, maybe we can trim a few frames. Oh, the I forgot to turn on the audio. I'm so smart. Let's see if this works. Ah, oh, Madison is so good at reference. I need to rewatch the stream and take a lot of notes. I couldn't take notes because I was there. So I need to rewatch. Oh, I'm not acting. <laughs> I really oh, like that. I'm not acting. I don't know about you guys, but for me, this feels very oh, nice. I'm not acting. <laughs> also, now it feels really nice also because I'm clearly Madison here was saying acting and we managed to hit exactly when she says it so now that's why the reference feels better and before it felt a little bit off because when we put it in it didn't fit and that's something that can happen to like anyone when you're shooting reference i have to go in and match first where my audio is to my reference and even though like let's say i'm saying the actual words in my reference when i put it in maya maybe it doesn't fit why I don't know, conversion, or maybe when you do it, it's not as fast as it actually should be, even though you think you're saying it as fast as it should. So then you tweak it until it fits and you're happy. So let's watch it again. See if there's anything we acting. need. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to give us a really successful thing. So I'm going to save this so that I don't cry if I lose it. And yeah, I think I might call it here just because uh, we've been streaming for almost three hours and a nice cup of tea would be really nice right now. 